Verizon 33 and Comcast 22, www.rctv.org. And the first item on the agenda at 7 o'clock is Camp Rice Moody, 29 Rice Road, Map 32, Lot 133, and this is an update from uh, Attorney Brad Blake. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you all again. I appeared before you last fall to discuss this matter. I'm here tonight with uh, certain representatives from the uh, Reading Council <coughs> of Girls. Rock and Con was in the front row sitting here. Also, we have representatives from the Girl Scout of Easton, Massachusetts, uh, and we have Jim Stereo, who's counsel for them, as well this evening, and some friends in the back who all for support. <clears throat> we appeared before you and discussed the concept that the Reading Council for Girls has owned this property for many, many years, has reached a point where they'd like to dissolve and turn over the ownership of this to the Girl Scouts. In doing that, however, they want to make sure it's preserved uh, as an open area and is used for camping purposes and for recreational purposes. And that's not intended to freeze the current physical condition. It's intended to allow there to be expansions and further use as appropriate. Uh, so that's the reason we're before you, is to put in place a conservation restriction that accomplishes those objectives. As I said last time, I've spoken with the state, and the state says you can have a conservation restriction that divides the property into two parts, one which would be the green area left in a natural vegetated condition, uh, and the rest of the site could be for recreational purposes and recognizing future development for that use. The real objective, of course, is to postpone or avoid, I should say, in perpetuity, any commercial development, any residential development or subdivision of the property. That's what we're trying to prevent. Once that is accomplished, then the, we'll then submit a petition to the Supreme Judicial Court to dissolve and transfer the property ownership over to the Girl Scouts. Uh, so what you have on the screen on the side uh, is a plan. And after we met with you the last time, Chuck met with uh, John Tilton of uh, Williams and Sabargas uh, to go and do a site walk. And this plan is a result of that site walk. On this one I've colored in green the area that would be the, so to speak, hardcore natural vegetation portion that you're used to seeing in a conservation restriction. The interior area where the lot area A is shown uh, is the area that would be for recreation use. As I say, that's not conservation. As you know what, that's conserving its ability to be used for recreational use, which is a viable, changeable uh, condition, uh, but would always be for that particular purpose. To accomplish, to accomplish this, we have to have a conservation restriction. I've given you, staple to that plan, a draft conservation restriction. There are two areas that we have to work out. Uh, Jim and I are going to work through some of the language, bring it back to you for your approval. It's designed to say what cannot take place on the site and what can take place on the site. And that's the classic format for the conservation restriction. Uh, so that's, that's what's uh, behind all of this. Uh, and I will say I spoke to Martha Reichert of the uh, Division of Conservation Services of the state. Uh, and she has said that this is something that they would look forward to. And they would have no problem with a conservation restriction being really bifurcated into two objectives of preserving uh, natural vegetation area and to allow and encourage uh, preservation and expansion of recreational use. So that's why we're back. I wanted to show you what has accomplished so far. We anticipate now in a matter of weeks, uh, Jim and I will be able to come back to you and give you a conservation restriction uh, that we hope you will find acceptable. This one I've given you now I put in brackets certain bolded italicized language, which is where we'll be working out the language to insert. The overall format, though, is this the one that the uh, Mass Conservation Association likes and the one that the state has approved in the past by way of formatting. So that's pretty much where we are. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you may have as we move forward trying to wrap this up. Um, I do have a question. I, I'd like to throw this out to the Conservation Commission. I briefly looked at this at the last hour. Um, on um, Roman Rule 2, a prohibited acts and uses in the conservation area, um, bracketed number four. And I understand the, the spirit of the no cutting, removing, or otherwise destroying trees, grasses, or other vegetation. 
but I wonder if there are danger trees that might, you know, dead trees that might be falling down, would that prohibit you from removing those? And I, and also, um, you know, we, we kind of um, are sensitive to invasive plant sure, species sure. as well. Okay. So I was, I don't know, okay. how do other members of the Conservation Commission feel about that? It's just something that's like, that's pretty restrictive. Mm -hmm. I think the, <coughs> or rather vegetation is probably broad in that, in that same uh, two, uh, A form. So it says grasses or rather vegetation is just all encompassing, all, ca all capturing. So um, that could be misconstrued to say what you were saying, like the invasives, you know, taking the bases, poison ivy or anything else. So it's, I think you have to kind of be careful yeah, what you say there. That's a good point because, you know, if this is being used as a Girl Scout camp, right. you don't want to have a. Those vines, I can't remember what yeah. site it was, but it's the oh. biggest poison ivy I've ever seen. So I, I think that's covered in purposes uh, in the last sentence, where it allows us to... Um, where, where is that, Chuck? What page? Okay. It's on uh, first page, page one. And it's in the last you know, couple of lines that talks about... Um, yeah, the conservation, preserving the conservation values, um, so so it doesn't impair, materially impair conservation uh, values. I get that, but um, but just to be clear, I think that needs a little bit more explanation, so that you know, so going forward, you know, there is no ambiguity in interpreting this. It's fine. Shot of anything being mm -hmm. a safety hazard or something. Sure. It's caught up in another yeah. tree. You can't touch it. Uh -huh. Well, right. just kind of right. something that's either a safety or something that would impinge upon the the convenient use of the property. Uh -huh. So that we'd be able to mitigate that. Is the is the one of the questions I had was um, something that's different is I notice in in one of the the setback lines where the pool is is yeah. that not included in the the cons conservation restriction because there's a structure in that? The pool. Yes, it, and there's some smoking in there okay. as well. And in fact, I was talking with Chuck beforehand that if activities take place, such as if there's a recreational field developed that alters the grade, if it's jurisdictional, it's still jurisdictional. So we'll still have to come back for you for those kinds of changes. This won't include any of that, but anything that is jurisdictional will remain there. So a question I have, just looking at the restriction um, space highlighted on the picture, is um, does that mean that, you know, um, does that mean that the remainder of the space um, is because you um, determine those that to be the conservation restriction area. Does that mean that the remainder of the space um, is intended for, um, you know, more intense recreational development? Because to me, most, you know, most of this lot is, um, as you know, is forested. Mm -hmm. um, and if I just sort of from my perspective, looking at this picture, it looks to me like, um, you know, clearly on the north side, not an insignificant buffer um, is is being kept between the property and the residents to mm -hmm. the north. Um, but the buffer on the west and south side looks a little bit more scant. And so, what I guess what I'm thinking is, what's the thought process of um, you know, if, if we, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, kind of like review and sort of bless this restriction, um, I guess I, w I was wondering what's going to, does that mean that we're sort of saying that development of, of this for, you know, a track or additional buildings or additional things is something that... 
you're not approving anything. All you're really doing is saying that the negative imposition of a conservation restriction only applies to, to the those areas, areas involved. If someone wants to alter it, and it is within a wetland jurisdiction, they still have to come back before. Right. So there's right. no implicit blessing as a consequence of that right. in the Wetlands Protection Act. Right. So uh, it does make it easy to have, or easier on us, to <coughs> have that uh, natural area, you know, where we want it with our, you know, no structure zone at the 35 foot area. So we, right. we would get in, you know, we, we, we have allowed a lot of work in the 35 foot area. And and I think that that conservation restriction isn't uh, or needs to be beefed up in some area. You might want to look at that now. Um, I mean, I actually was surprised to see it in the south east corner because when we walked down there, there was almost a trail and you know, opened up into those lots that were in back of it. Um, so I, I, just, I do think they're doing three sides, uh, and maybe that third side is a gift. In the southern, southeastern uh, side? Southeast, yeah. <coughs> Lower southeast, yeah. The, the request that we'd have is that your regulations at the 35 foot stretch back not be interpreted to restrict the conservation restriction. They're two different things. Uh, this is only to impose restrictions on the property for what it can and cannot be used for. The wetland issues of 35 feet are the impact that activities have or changes have on the wetlands. So they're two different things. So by your, again, by your approving a conservation restriction that shows this delineation, this is not a wetland delineation. This is simply a buffer. Mm -hmm. That's what this, and frankly, the buffer is broader in the northern extremity because there are houses right there. That's a matter of really courtesy in one right. sense to the abundance. Any other comments or questions from the commission members? Yeah, I had a question about uh, the facilities that may be allowed inside um, in our area. Is there any way you can define where those would be or the sizes that would be acceptable or how many? Can't do it now because the girls just don't know what in the long term they'd be putting there. Mm -hmm. So it'd be inappropriate to try and restrict the use on a particular activity. Uh, so we use a generic term. I mean, the statute talks about recreation and it doesn't define it narrowly. So we simply want to make sure that recreation use can take there, can take place there. We have suggested that the use has to be either public or non-profit. So you wouldn't have a, a, a racetrack there. I mean, that's not the intention, obviously. But um, that's the only kind of restriction that we feel comfortable putting on there now. Because the uses of the camp may change from time to time. Uh, whether there's a rope climb, or whether there's some sort of an obstacle course, something of that nature may be put there. And where it's going to be may, may have to be determined in the future, depending on the rest of what's taking place on the site. So I think it would be kind of restricting unduly the future by trying to guess at what might be appropriate. When this is executed, what is this Conservation Commission's uh, responsibility for day-to-day -day activity? Would we have to grant requests for camping or building or a new road or a new structure uh, after this is granted? You would have no, all, all you'd have to make sure is it wasn't used for non-recreational purpose. That's the scope of your authority under the conservation restriction. Uh, and of course the wetland, the boundary around the outside, you'd have the normal kind of policing that you have for any conservation restriction. Okay, so we have the typical under that conservation plus the Wetlands Protection Act and the green and the inside, just as long as it's not part of the res, uh, restricted uses, anything exactly. else can happen. Exactly. Yeah. So, did the not even this land of the Girl Scouts? Or? I'm sorry? What was the land going from? To it's going from a non-profit group that existed in Reading for years, the Reading Council for Girls. Okay. Uh, and they've determined it's appropriate now to turn it over to the Girl Scouts in Eastern Massachusetts. They're both non-profits, so it'll be actually a Girl Scout-owned facility. It has not been historically. But the use doesn't change with the same historical use. So, I'm just a little... 
Why would we be involved in jurisdiction of activity on non- Well, actually, the, the statute says that a conservation restriction, we all tend to think of it as a wetland activation, right. but a conservation restriction actually can restrict historical things, changes to those can restrict recreational uses, allow parties to renew in perpetuity for recreational use only. The same and reason I, why they can't play baseball at Memorial Park? That, well, that's a private one that was put on there. Yeah, yeah that's a thing. negative. This, this is just the reverse. This would okay. let you right. use it for recreation. Okay. If anyone has any additional thoughts, is that Jim and I are going to be working together to get this and get it back to you next week or two. If you'd let us know, we're trying to incorporate anything into the. Uh, okay, so document. this is just kind of tonight. This is just informational. Just wanted to share what okay. what we've spoken about before, what we've done thus far since then, and just indicate we're going to be back shortly. If we're off the wrap or so. okay. At that point, would you be asking for us to consider the, the draft for uh, signing? We'll give you a draft in advance so you can, we can talk about it shortly. So within a month? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Something within a month? Yes. Okay. okay. Did everybody get that? Thank you. Now, may I take one moment just to address sure. the Commission in terms of concerns about the CR itself? Um, it was clearly our preference uh, when we began negotiations with the current owner of the property to take a direct deed uh, on this and not involve the Conservation Commission with respect to the restriction to begin with. But the current owner of the property uh, preferred that we not do a deed restriction because it expires in 50 years and can't be brought forward. So therefore, the Girl Scouts would then have the ability to deal with the property any way that they chose. It was the preference of uh, Rock's organization to have that latitude, okay, to develop the property. It was their idea to keep the property as pristine as it possibly can be. The other approach that we, we thought about taking was if uh, the uh, present owner of the property, was the nonprofit, was not going to dissolve, we could have had the title revert back to them in the event that the Girl Scouts' use of the property was abandoned for a period of two years, let's say. But because they were dissolved, there's no one to revert the title to. So this, by default, became the way that we wanted to consider addressing the problem. The Girl Scouts currently occupy the property under a 30-year lease, which was signed in 2015, which has another 30-year option to run. So I think we were the logical choice, okay, in terms of being the default entity, uh, to take over operation of this facility. <coughs> Hopefully we can accommodate any of your concerns here. But on an ongoing basis, I, I, I want to reiterate what Mr. Latham said, and that is that you're not going to have any ongoing monitoring responsibility other than to see that the intended use of the property, okay, is, is, is uh, facilitated. Thank you. Okay, thank okay. you. Are there any comments from um, the audience? I'm Roberta Nolan down with Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts, and I just wanted to note that um, the Girl Scouts has actually, have actually been using the property since the 1940s. Um, and you know, as you probably all know, you know, we've had a long-standing relationship with the town of Reading and been um, occupying and, and covering the expenses, etc. So, um, thank you for hearing us today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the um, continuation of the Notice of Intent 270-0714, 135, 139, and 149 R. Howard Street. Map 10, lots 75, 76, and 77, Infrastructure Holdings, LLC. And um, a quote was sent out to um, respective um, engineering uh, environmental firms. Um, to get a quote for the analysis and extent of wetlands and updates and, and storm water. And we received two uh, just recently, and I haven't had an opportunity to really look through that. Um, there were qualifications that were sent with those two quotes. Um, and I don't know if anybody else has had the opportunity on the commission. No. I'm going to turn the conflict of interest one. Yeah, I read yeah, that's Scanned all I saw. It's a conflict of interest. One from BSC. I'll tell you the truth, I haven't. I saw the horse like Whitney and I. That was one that caught my eye. It's off of this. It's a pretty original. 
I'm not invited for the work. I'm looking at a three page one. Yeah, 1230 today. Uh, these were sent out. Oh, so I thought, I thought you were saying... No, no, I didn't get, I, I, yeah, no, no, I just saying I just was... I have one from Matt Schweisberg, Principal of Wetland Strategies and Solutions. It doesn't have... And then I have Worsley and Witten. Those were the only two emailed out. Was there something else from VSC? It was... Uh, VSC has a conflict. Okay. A principal of the firm is a direct abutter. So they wouldn't take on the project. Okay. I think it, it went on to say not only does he live on Howard Street, but he currently has water <laughs> right. property, so they, there's nothing they can do. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's just that's probably a, a review in itself. Yeah. <laughs> nothing you can do. Probably a good call. Yeah. So we have to, if you haven't looked them over, which do you want to take the time to now to look them over? No. Or it probably I, can't be done. No. There's too much to Worsley and Witten. I'm hearing one say no. Chime in with Okay. Well, have you, has, have you people, have you folks looked through it? <laughs> because if you haven't, I don't think that's, that's fair to be able to render a, a educated decision. I agree. <laughs> I appreciate your candor. I have not. I haven't. I, the only thing, I, as I said, that I got was the conflict of interest one. I didn't get the other proposals. Mm -hmm. oh, so it wasn't Bob, was you? So, uh, yeah, the Dave. Uh, when was that? The one, they were sent out today. Yeah, 1230. 1230 today. Oh. Yeah. I see you on hold it. On, hold on. <coughs> it just says peer review estimates. Yeah, I do. I, I have it. 1230 today? Yeah. 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 When was the other one sent out, the conflict of interest? I didn't see I that. We got that yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, I think. I get a lot of emails from Chuck in 36 hours. Did you want the exact time? No, no, I got a lot. I got a lot of emails from you in 36 hours. Uh, well, I'm I'm sending them in as they're coming out. Yeah. And remember, we're not. Right. We've never restricted anyone from handing things in at the last minute, and this is what happens. Yeah. I'm trying to get it to you as right. soon as possible. Mike looks at a lot of stuff on his computer, and I want to at least get you something, <coughs> you know, electronic to have at the meeting. Can we put a restriction on that? <laughs> Receiving something at too late. Two o'clock. Yeah. <coughs> no, not really. Not really. I mean, just just wondering. I actually think it's. I'll, I'll check before I say anything, but I think sometimes there is a. Yes, yes. Clause to say five days. I think it's on the website, isn't it, Chuck? It's probably in the uh, application material, but it might okay. be in the uh, my lot. Just a thought. This is Sorry. Right. <laughs> I actually don't we think it's a bad idea for can, a heads up, but. Yeah. Pick the subcontract, by the way. Yep. Professor at MIT, I know, used to grade his papers. <laughs> Told him to stand in a wheel uh, and a steel wheel and throw them up in the air, and the highest step got the highest marks. <laughs> so we uh, we'll make a motion to continue this until next meeting. So, Mayor, second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, Mr. Castelluche. Lucio, do you have any comments? Well, I, I just I had a question, I guess. Is, is there a deadline for getting the uh, bids in? Yeah, it was it was March it was the 12th. 12th. It was the 12th, so that was yesterday. So okay. um, it doesn't give us a lot of time. And So I could, uh, I, there's a couple of more I wanted since we've extended this for two weeks. I think I'll extend the invitation for two additional weeks to what if, okay. Everyone on the list. Why don't you extend it for one week? <laughs> so that we can Why don't you... Uh, four less. <laughs> two weeks less. Uh, four four days. Days. Yeah. Chuck. Who one did, week? Yeah, who, who did you send it out to? 
BSC, Horse and Witten. BSC, Horse and Witten. Schroesberg. We're dealing with BSC and the other three. BHB? BHB. Did you get a response from BHB? No. You know anyone over there? I don't know. I can, I can reach out. Yeah. See if they're still there. You have to get three bids, Chuck? No. no. It's, they're under a certain amount, so okay. it's, we just have to do uh, best business practices. All right. No. I, 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 yeah, they're I, always going to be under the, there's no right. possible way they could go yeah. yeah just because of the scope of the project that we're asking okay yeah, and we're still trying to get bids for both the the uh, stormwater calculations and the wetlands delineation Chuck is that correct stormwater calculations and the wetlands delineation yeah. We haven't changed that. We asked everyone for the same thing. Okay. So we're working in conjunction with the engineer department. And um, the commission felt like they wanted stormwater to be reviewed. And, uh, and also the wetland. And when I talked to the engineering department, they thought it would be a good idea. And, uh, reviewed what I requested and uh, approved that. And then we sent it out. So we were not going to change our bid request. So the two bids that came in, do they cover both? They do. Any other questions? Oh, Mary Rimmer was another one. But she... Uh, Did she get a response from her? No, I, ca I talked to her on the phone. So Mary would only do the wetland part. And then when I tried to send her the bid request, all that information I was trying to send bounced, and then I called her up and I said, "You know what? We're really looking for both." And so she was okay with that. Um, what about the gentleman that did off of Franklin Street Preservation Inc.? Oh, you you want additional? You want me to try to get additional people at this point, or just try to um, keep cultivating if, if the people we've, that we've sent it out to? If we've got. If we've got an, a, a week, maybe, yeah. I'd, I'd so how, how we sent out how many in total? Four? There, there were five we five. sent out. Okay. We got three so back? Two back. Two, two yeah. back and one conflict of interest, so you're not counting. So we got two yeah. bids. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I mean, if you can get... I'd like uh, to see at least one more. Yeah. If you can get uh, another... Nobody contact or two at, at another more. place we could make a call and see if they could look at it within a week. Yeah. That has to do with how busy everybody is and how big the project is. Whether it's worth their time. And, and it's not a big project, right. you know. Right. That's understandable. Okay. Right. Mm. 720. Notice of intent 270-0713, 44 Roma Lane, Map 50, Lot 36, Carroll. And this is continuation. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Hope everyone is well. Yep. And I believe we did receive some more information. Uh, yes. No, so it's in our packets. Yeah. No. No? no? There might have been something in your package, but we got some stuff today. Too. That was sent this afternoon. Right. So the only thing, that, the, same only, thing? the only thing that was sent today were the um, abutter approval uh, letters. Oh no, we got a whole bunch of attachments. And that was just an addition I, to what was sent on the sixth. Was that? Well, one of them looked like you'd revamped the, the a stone wall and how it connected from the one that would traverse your yard but at the back piece. It used to die into grade now it looks like we're gonna make the wall. The three one I thought that was a different sign though. I said, oh cool. Yeah. So right. based on the feedback that we had from the meeting on the twenty seventh, um, at that meeting we didn't have our materials and uh, with enough notification for hard copies and electronic copies. However, uh, well, we had the constructive dialogue and we got some feedback. So based on that feedback from the 27th, um, we um, got the uh, revised plans um, from the meeting to Chuck on the, uh, the 6th. 
um, and then followed up today with the same materials in addition to the um, uh, butter approval letters to have the trees removed. Um, so just to recap from where we were from, uh, from last week, in addition to the uh, butter approval letters, the stone wall um, that is on the left side of the house, um, the meeting prior had stopped about four to five feet short of the uh, existing stone wall, which is the uh, rear property line, uh, which we had extended uh, tying in to the, to the existing um, no, um, natural buffer uh, zone that we spoke about last meeting. Um, the natural buffer that is existing to the rear of the house uh, will, be, uh, uh, will remain existing uh, from that point and essentially the two, uh, two six inch uh, maples um, in which the uh, rock wall will now be extended will be removed along with the other trees uh, proposed. Um, there was also <clears throat> some, uh, some uh, lines uh, that the Donahoe had uh, had on this original uh, submission that were outside of the the work area proposed um, of the uh, stone wall which we had removed which is uh, which was approximately where that 20 inch oak uh, was at the at the base of the uh, where the two walls connected um, there was uh, a consideration or there was an ask uh, to have uh, put uh, some language onto the um, the elevation plan here, um, citing that the existing rock wall and everything uh, closest to the house, they proposed uh, proposed uh, boulder wall uh, would be our delineation line uh, of work area uh, within that area. Um, and then la lastly, and uh, Susie, let me know if I'm missing anything else. Um, the mitigation plant mitigation plans um, that were uh, proposed for the area um, outside of the uh, proposed walk rock wall seven trees that we have um, proposed to uh, be removed. Um, we're proposing to uh, plant seven trees, a combination of flowering dogwoods and uh, white spruce uh, that were highlighted in our plant packet, um, as well as seven winterberry and uh, blueberries, which we're hoping will suffice uh, for that uh, mitigation of those trees uh, removed. So a total of seven trees and a total of seven plants? Yes. In a combination of those Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I don't want. I don't want them to think it's seven. Seven and seven. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of understood that. Okay. I just want to be clear. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. Um, the only uh, two things uh, that we had left out um, is uh, Dave uh, brought up a, a good point. We weren't able to uh, to connect yesterday, but um, if there's a way that we could draft into the uh, language of uh, of our determination, uh, hopefully, which would be able to um, happen tonight. Uh, would be in the event that we would like to put in a uh, fence, uh, fence of some sort along the boulder wall on the side of the house. Um, the side of the side of the house, uh, obviously, for the uh, for the years uh, that we've had existing, has been a point of contention with uh, uh, so the uh, the kids being able to access that area, and certainly with an elevation change. Um, you know, again, that was something we thought we dotted our eyes and crossed our T's. Um, but in the event that uh, that we would like to go forward with that, uh, we would like that language included. Um, that would uh, so that we wouldn't have to come back to you folks uh, with an additional filing um, to have that added. Um, and then, very lastly, um, in one of our numerous uh, site visits over the course of the uh, the years, um, the uh, subject of a recreational child treehouse um, has uh, come up. Um, we have not done anything on the side of the house um, for obvious reasons since June of uh, 13. Um, but again, uh, we'd like to, I guess, no clarification from the commission. Is there any way you can draw around the fence and wherever the proposed area for the tree house? No, you can. Oliver, so the fence is on here. Yeah. So, uh, proposed um, fencing uh, along the side yard uh, would run along the inside of the boulder wall, right along here, um, excluding this area from any further work. Any gates? Uh, there would be no gates. What type of fencing? Just chain link or privacy fence? or? Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Her initial thoughts would be post and rail. I like that. Because it allows animal access, mm -hmm. and we, we would have to ask you about how we, we would allow animal access. If you didn't right. yeah. We've discussed it over the months and the years, and uh, most likely it would be a post and rail. You're not going to run it along the back, Dad? Um, along the 
along the back here? Going to the right, yeah, down uh, there. That would, that would not be so okay. that. Uh, <coughs> where's the, uh, is it going in a tree, and where's the tree house going? Uh, it would be probably utilized as 24 and show if it's So it's, it's a regular kid's tree house. Right. Yeah, we don't regulate that. Okay. I just, I wanted to be clear about it because we're putting on there, this is the limit of work. We're not no, doing any work. It's not going to be three stories or something. No, like but that. No. obviously we're going to have to go in there. all that guy on TV that builds tree houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. But yeah. again, I didn't want any ambiguity that you if think it came out for a site visit during the course of construction and you saw that activity. Is this a, a dad, uh, dad, and um, dad and uncle? Do you think it's going to hurt the tree in any way? I'm going to do a little research on it. I mean... I have, no, I have no reason to believe that it's going to hurt, hurt the tree. Yeah, then we shouldn't have to worry about that. Because the rendered plane yeah. shows a fence around the pool, right? Right. Yes, sir. So it does go along the back wall, right? Uh, yes, but the but that would not be a post, post oh, rail. that was the difference, okay. Yes. So this drawing is no good, right? Yeah, this... Correct. I think that's, that's the, the original. That, that was on the original yeah. NOI from uh, December of right. last so year. This is the new what it's going to look like. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Except for the planting um, uh, along what, where the that area where the tree house is, is it's the seven, um, seven trees and seven. the seven yeah. shrubs. Seven shrubs. Not, not that robust one that that shows under exist the, what you are proposing. Correct. Yeah. That's so what we are proposing right. is the seven uh, trees combination want, and the seven shrub combination. Right. I just want members of the conservation to understand that. Right. Know. This will reflect that, right? No. It's the seven trees yes, and, and seven bushes. Yep. Right. Yes. And again, we, the we existing have, natural. Yes. At the we we exactly. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, there was concern about that all that would survive. Viability. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. A lot of it looked like it wasn't going to live. And that was the concern in the last meeting, yes. I just ask, I have a question. Um, so, yeah, I've got some questions too. Go ahead. This area, yeah, where's, where's, where's that? that? This is a buffer system. So, that's what the sun's going to so, so gonna be. Yeah. That that's had a request for shrubs in a so previous RDA. Is that going to be um, vegetated like the, the picture that Bob just held up? Yeah, I mean, that's. So I thought in our last conversation with these folks, they had they were going to fit those sort of plants. Uh, yes. So uh, correct. So the original, uh, the first NOI that we had back in October of 2012 um, included a natural uh, buffer within the the rear rear of the house. There were three trees planted there, along with an assortment of uh, blueberries. I don't know the the existing, but per our conversation from the last meeting on the 27th. The existing natural um, barrier, that the three to five foot uh, bed, would remain, and that we would be enhancing that area with additional plantings. <coughs> so, being the uh, IT guy and conservation agent, I missed most of that. Are you going to plant? That's I'm going to repeat. Is that area back of the pool being planted as we see it now? I'm going to plant this. As this, because this, this is going to be seven and seven, not yes. what's here. So are you, is this what you're going to plant back here is what Chuck wants to Where do we plant it? But yes, it's I'm not, not going to plant it. It's not going to go on the other side of the existing retaining rock wall where our property line is. So that's an accurate representation of what you're going to plant or the quantity in this area here? Quantity, no. No, the, the, you're going to at least put some put some new plants within this the, project. The existing three to five foot barrier it will exist, mm -hmm. uh, which I know was a point of contention from last time. We planted three trees from last time. We planted some blueberries. That area will remain existed, and we're proposing that we're going to enhance that area with additional plantings. And it's also where the well's going, or is that no the well? No. <coughs> proposed. Proposed. Thank you. Proposed well. Is in this area right here. That's on the black and white plan. Yes. Okay. All these plantings here. Well, I know that you wrote something about that. Is that was going to be the, where the seven trees and seven shrubs? Yes. So this is this is not in that 
an accurate representation of what will be planted, what we're proposing by the seven trees and yes. seven shrubs within this area. Wow. And then just leave the, the rest natural? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that was in um, the email. So I had a question about, um, so is there, it's true there's an existing stone wall um, between the side yard and Roma Lane, right? Um, Existing. Uh, right here? No. Um, no the, the way the boulders are, Matt, just the couple of boulders. Right here? No. Down towards Roma Lane? Yeah. Uh, right here are a collection of, let's say, anywhere from four to maybe six to eight inch rocks. Uh, so it's more single. like a farmer's stone wall. We laid some, the kids and I laid some rocks out there. It's not like it's a concrete in. Yeah. No. no. I think that happened during the, after the RDA, kind of when, I mean, that, yes. that's not very old. That's just. Okay. No, this this was the uh, May and June of 2013. We, okay. Uh, you just put those in. Questions from the commission members? I know, it was great. Yeah. And congratulations. You did a great job with that. What about um, pool equipment? And, you know, some people sometimes have a, a pool shed. Yep. Um, Are you just going to store your uh, equipment and supplies you know, in the house? And sure. Uh, so this is our existing uh, deck um, as it is uh, right here. Uh, we have access yeah. um, underneath here, and we're um, because of where we think the power will come into the house right here. Uh, we're actually thinking of re well, we are going to repurpose this area uh, in order to house the equipment and, and anything else we have okay. in there right now. Gotcha. So it's currently open. There's some lattice work there, but uh, we're going to look to weatherproof that area and kind of utilize that as a shed. Question. I had a question about the pool. If you. Yeah, um, just a little thing about the stairs at the bottom of that proposed deck. That's it's a small infringement onto the sewer easement. Do you need a variance for that, or that's existing, that's existing. isn't it? This it's was existing, existing oh, okay. Uh, okay. at the construction of the house. All right. It's not only a problem if somebody has to go in and use the easement. They you, they have no liability for. Removing or damaging stuff. Really that's works. the way we understood so. it when we first. Okay. So I thought that's yeah. vaguely what I remember being. I just so. wanted to touch on. No harm done to somebody has to move it. Yeah, <laughs> and there's, a, there's an access. Yeah, but I, I didn't know it was always there either. Right. 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 Good question. So I was wondering if um, if what type of pool it was, the filtration system. Did we get any specs on it? Uh, and an operation and maintenance plan, and if one's needed, because sometimes uh, when it's a self filter, it's not there's not much maintenance. So, do you do you know what type of pool you're going to install? The spec sheets that we all had were conducive to be as um, conservation friendly um, as possible. So, as a salt water um, injector, mm -hmm. um, and the t um, I'd be lying if I knew the exact uh, system, but it doesn't require backwash um, into it, so it'll be self-contained. Uh, if, if you could, uh, just if you can get us a uh, operation and maintenance plan for the yeah. so yeah. maintaining the pool, winterizing it, that's what we're looking for. It could be pretty simple. Okay. So uh, maybe the pool installer would have that. Yep. Operation maintenance plan. So it looks like the patio, I'm just sort of go, I'm going off of this drawing, so it looks like the patio pavers are going to be to the side of the driveway, go to the back of the house, go to part of the back, but the brown part, sort of that, this brown part between the deck and the patio, is that just going to be just landscape mulch and... Uh, so, so, softscape, landscape. Softscape, uh, okay. And there's not going to be a wall on this end, right? It's just going to be sort of seamlessly. Uh, correct. But there would have to be a wall around the pool. Maybe a fence, but not a... Oh, yes, excuse a, me. Sorry. But not a wall. Yeah. Like a vertical... 
Yeah. So, so fence fence would be um, uh, perpendicular yeah. to the yeah, street, I running parallel. Um, but this would uh, this would fall a natural gradient. Yeah. In this flower then um, going towards the proposed bubble wall. Well. Chuck, you brought up some other issues. Do you want to discuss those? Yes, we should. You can bring them up because I've forgotten them. Oh, what did I bring up? Steam drawn. Um, so what Becky, Becky's asking is I asked the commission to look at the drawings and to say, is there enough detail on these drawings to uh, for everyone to understand that, that we can kind of keep the project to what we're seeing on the plans, or is there something missing? That's that's all I wanted to know. The, the commission feels like these have enough detail with the with the fence, with the retaining wall, and the pool, uh, the slopes. I thought they were fine. I thought they were perfectly detailed. To be honest. The, the only thing I guess I'm thinking about that is that the introduction of the of the fence. When they go to get a certificate of compliance, is that going to be a problem if this plan doesn't include that fence on it? For Matt, yeah, that would be a problem. <coughs> but not, but no one else in town, just Matt. He's like dragging you back in here. So usually how we handle the fence is uh, it's not on this plan. You don't have to go and get a plan with a fence on it, but when we get the certificate of compliance and the as-built plan, Show us the fence. I'll write it into the order. Okay. Right now. Okay. And what I like about the fence, it's it's on the working side of the retaining wall. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. already disturbed. It, and also the other the, the other fence that you're taking along uh, the house. So the it, it, it doesn't go all the way up, but it. So the fence around the pool area. Would you like that included on this? Um, yeah. it's, it's on the color rendering, You're but clearly not on, on this one. You're going to have to show Glenn a fence around the pool. So, if you might as well do it for us. If you're going to update sure. it, put both fences sure. on it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah he'll, he'll ask. Yep. I, Glenn's a building inspector. Yep. So, do we have enough information? If you write that into the. I, I think we're good. I'd like to get the plan, if possible. Prior to the next meeting, that's two weeks. If you can, if you can do that, it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Matt had it to me and yeah, on I, Monday. I can, the last spin, time. I can spin this to you by Friday. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a problem moving forward and writing the order for the next meeting if uh, if that's what you got, uh, you all want to uh, yeah, agree I, to. I'm fine with it. Yep. So, road. Yeah. I'm just curious. I probably asked this the last time. When, I, but when are you starting this? Like, the minute spring lets you, or? Well, we're not putting the cart before the horse, so not until we get a letter from the, the <laughs> town. Assuming, assuming nothing's going to forestall the project. I just when, when would you like to start it? In um, an ideal world. In an ideal world, we're, we're hoping to start the uh, the side yard um, as soon as the weather will cooperate this uh, the springtime. Knowing lead times um, uh, for um, for pool companies, um, they're planning one year out, so I wouldn't necessarily think that's within the scope of this year, but certainly our side yard uh, would be. So, so if everything works out with the permit um, and we get it signed at the next meeting, you should be okay with your appeal period, which is a 10-day appeal after we issue the permit. You should be okay to start work in the third week of April. Who's the appeal period protect? It's it's on the uh, state form form five, and it just allows you know a lot of people they'll stand up at the meeting and they write in to DEP to uh, do third party review. So, or not third party review, but some sort of review on the project. That's the re the appeal that they're talking about. So it allows anyone who has an issue to contact DEP in a timely. This is in lieu of already, already public solicitation for any comments and concerns. Yeah. It, it's the same thing that happened at this is Arcadia. 
So Arcadia Ave, we had issued that permit and the neighborhood appealed. With, um, in this case, uh, during that time period, once the uh, determination had been issued, would that be um, an abutter or would that be anybody among the com community that, or the commission that could appeal? Yeah, anyone. Well, I think you have rights when you're at the meeting and you're in a direct abutter. Um, that's why we ask people to sign the agenda. Uh, but anyone can appeal. So, who is the taxpayer? Kind of sum it up. Yeah. So if it's someone across town and they bring up a great point that we missed, it would be looked at. Sure. So. And this is customary for any. Uh, every every project, every project has an appeal is that period. Ten it's, day it's in the instructions. Appeal. Sure. And every RDA also has a ten-day appeal period. So it's it's customary. Yeah. All right. So. Um, but there's no neighbors here tonight, and, I, and that's kind of how I judge it. Sure. So I don't expect that someone would appeal this. Sure. Okay. Are there any comments from the audience? I'm with them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was waiting to see if you stood up and complained. <laughs> oh, no. Can I make a motion to close? I'll just hear for the happy ending. I'll second. Please. NOI 270 071344 Romer Lane. Anika seconded. All those in favor? Okay. We'll close and we'll issue at the next meeting and we'll be ready. So I'll, I usually get these things done at the last minute. So I'll either send it to you. Yeah. You can see they supersede the seeds in gray. And, and you, you just look with like the fence around. <coughs> yeah. And they post a rail added to this, uh, this room. Yeah. And you don't need anything. And do any you other? have uh, No, that's fine. Okay. That's all we need. Perfect. And if the appeal period is anything like yeah, don't be worried about that. The last two minutes of your son's basketball game, when they're up by four points, the clock never seems to move. <laughs> <laughs> Just had one of those. <laughs> so before we start the next, uh, the next. It's at seven thirty. Next meeting, yeah. So before we start that, I just wanted to let Carl know that on section five E A. Uh, all requests for information shall be submitted no less than six days prior to the date of the continuance. Oh. Prior to the date of the continuance? Well, we, that's when we continue a hearing and we requested information. They have to get right. it to us six days prior to the meeting, the next meeting. Prior to the next meeting. So it is in our regulations. Yeah. If you want to enforce you allow it, it to happen because you're let me guy. know. Yeah. Six well, a lot of it's easier to look at. <laughs> Generally, I say so if it's nothing that if it's like one plan change, like if they brought in the fence tonight, right. that's easily digested and it doesn't need six days. And you know, it's sometimes it's tough to get someone to pay attention to you for such a small project. But if it's a lot, and again, it's it's up to you. I might just put everything in front of you, and you have to make a decision until we kind of change. The standards and the standard right now is you know, bring them in and we'll, we'll discuss them. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Make the hard copies of the. Um, oh, great. Yeah, I, re I recognize this. I saw that. Great. All right. And, Thank and you. we did review the. Um, I did. I reviewed the three approvals from your neighbors on the trees. Yeah. Okay. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Those are just the hard copies yeah. of those. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next meet, Next item on the agenda at 7:30 um, is an order of conditions. Sure. Um, that's what I'm doing. Oh, uh, order of conditions 270-0669 plan change lot four Kylie Drive map 34 lot 143 McGee. McGee. We've got. Uh, a letter and uh, a new plan uh, with proposed plantings. Hi, I'm John McGee. I'm the builder working at 20 Kylie Drive. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of history, uh, I came across this property last year. Um, in the spring, my understanding is that the previous owners who were the neighbors to the 
uh, kind of right on the left of this building. Um, they went before you in the past. They proposed a very large house and a pool and a whole bunch of stuff that kind of filled up the entire lot. They got it approved through you guys and then <laughs> proceeded to say, actually, no, we don't want to build it. So then they put it up for sale and um, that's when I came on the scene. Um, I proposed a much smaller house. Um, well, the house is not that much smaller, but the, I removed the pool and pulled the house away from the wetlands, pulled it away from the, um, the, the trail. trail, thank you, and, you know, switched the driveway over to the other side and kind of the intention of reducing the impact on, on the whole lot and just reducing the scale of the project. Um, and when I went to you guys originally to propose the different sized house, you agreed to um, the modification. The house is now there. Um, it is not landscaped. We got stuck by the cold early winter. So now um, that the spring is coming, from what I hear, I'm starting to look toward doing the actual landscaping portion of it. Part of that was looking at the plantings plan that had been proposed for the previous house. Um, when I started to look at the scale of it, it seemed rather overwhelming. Um, and I talked to Chuck and kind of talked about the idea of kind of keeping the core of the plan, keeping the location of the plantings the way it had been, um, but reducing the number of plants uh, in order to just simplify the scale a little bit and make it um, something more a scale that I could accomplish. Um, and he suggested I submit a new plan um, illustrating the location and uh, types of plants which were essentially from the original plan just distilled down to, to certain plants in certain locations um, with the goal of kind of covering a swath along the back there in the 10 foot, what is that, no build or no structures or whatever it's called, that 10 foot zone, yeah. and then along the easement where the trail was, kind of preserving that buffer as well. And if you did, folks remember there was one tree kind of right in the middle of where the house is that was a mature tree that was taken down. If you, what kind of tree was that? You remember that, Dave? Crab apple. Crab apple, yeah. Um, Another nice, neat type. Well, Chuck, well. have you taken yeah. a look at this? Yeah, so I, I did, and I reviewed the original plan, which I agree was a pretty extensive plant list. Yeah. A nice plant list. <laughs> um, so, I mean, my first thought was that it was a little light, and I thought that it was mostly small shrub based. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would offer too much of a habitat. Just, I guess sort of my initial thoughts but so and then just look at the quantities and then just in particular the size of the plants so I think there's a few things that would have made me feel more um, better about it would be the the size the gallon pots shrubs mixing in a few trees I had noted that there were some white pines over here in the near the trail and there was the river birches below where you have purple now so the only proposed tree currently is the arborvitae, which I suppose technically, depending who you ask, is whether a woody shrub or a tree. But um, I think spaced like that, like you have them in red, and that particular tree, I just don't think they'd offer, you know, before they were a much tighter group of, of arborvitaes along that. Mm -hmm. So, and then just to do kind of quick math, if you said there was about 40% reduced, so 40%, I counted, roughly 180 proposed plants originally. So 40% of that would be, like, say, 70 plants. Mm -hmm. So even... I have about 50 there. Yeah, so, which, so even just some of the quantities going up, another, you know, the cinnamon fern 10 for such a large area, just they might multiply over years and get kind of hardy, but even 20 would be mm -hmm. more significant. Mm -hmm. um, I think upping the the sizes, I mean, a, one, a number one low bush blueberry is 
the size of a small perennial or smaller. Mm -hmm. Could increase the size yeah, of the Yeah, and, and, and also, I think yeah. it's a book we've talked about recently here. It, it just might have a better chance of surviving, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I would even suggest, I wrote like even number five. Okay. The price difference is probably 15 or less dollars a shrub, mm -hmm. but you're getting at least a double. Significantly yeah. larger plant. Yeah, that's I fine. think that's probably. Not. And then I wrote just if, if getting up to the quantity, even mixing in a few. The, the original plant had some river birch or red maple just to kind of get some of that canopy. Mm -hmm. But that was my initial thoughts. Uh, I don't really have, certainly, I know the cinnamon fern is not a terribly expensive plant, so increasing the quantity of those is fine with me. And increasing the size of the. Um, the blueberries, I think, is reasonable. Um, again, I don't think that 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 doesn't that shouldn't affect me too much. In terms of the um, what was it, the pine or the river birch and the river birch, birch, and birch. birch. Those were those were along the back, the larger plants. The I think there was white pine along where the proposed trail was from the previous plant, and then there was river birch below. Oh, were those in the like on the easement side? I think. That I know I discussed a little bit with um, engineering and with Chuck regarding, there was a question regarding putting larger scale plants inside that drainage easement. Oh. Um, although I don't, Chuck, do you remember, uh, how did that, I think you spoke with um, someone from engineering about that. They don't want any plants ab above it so they have access and below it, I just noted that the berm was missing. Someone took out the corner of the berm and then took out the topsoil in that area. I, you know, I'm, I mean, that, that was kind of vegetated with some rush, and now it's, it's just, you know, it's just gravel, gravel, stone, and whatnot. But, um, I'm not sure about below it. I did talk to them about it. I said I did like I, I like this plan, and I don't think that they're going to come down and and I don't think they're going to go there anyways, right, right, at right. all ever. So Most likely, it's never going to be accessed. To, to replant what was there because it was taken out, I think, is a great idea, <laughs> and that's that's in this lower area right here that, that we're talking about. So I think that's a good idea if those. If, how you agree with what what's going in there? I did want to make sure we had enough just shading along this trail for not only the new homeowners but for anybody who wants to use the trail because it's actually really nice now. Uh, stone dust path, kiosk, signs all the way down to a bridge that a scout built a couple of years back. So um, that, that's my only thought. I, I, I would add that not being out to the site, and I went to the site with Becky and, and Dave, and there's a lot of stuff happening here. There's not so much anything happening in this area. That's true. There's a lot of so pine. There's taller trees up, up in here. So I don't know if that... Did you go and see the site, Carl? I did not know. So it looks like to take 40%. Um, so first off, this is a request. So we did issue the order of conditions with 170 plants on it, right. blah, blah, blah. There was a reduction. I thought that, you know, backing up a little bit, that we, we didn't ask for that um, extensive, you know, planting plan, but, but really liked it when it came in. But, you know, just kind of keeping our practical heads on, uh, does that need to happen when there's no pool, when we reduce the size of the house, and this has become more natural, and we got the improvements to the trail. So we, we did get a lot of those things already, and it's, it's almost uh, having a, a, a lot of mitigation for, you know, the house. So I, I thought it was good to come in here and request a difference. Uh, in the size and scope of the planting plan. Um, I think the, the original one was priced out at $10,000, and I'm not gonna ask what this costs, but it, it's, it's, will it work? Will it survive? And I guess, do we have enough shading? And do, and do you like what's in there? I mean, would you accept it if we added 
we you added what the, you what you requested. The previous list was was ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm hearing. I didn't price it out. I did. I would have thought much more than that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, that, that was a that that was just for the plants. That didn't include any labor or anything. Uh, uh, so you know, that's when I started to say, was, "Oh my goodness, this I'd is to work tomorrow. way over the scale of <laughs> yeah, steal the plant list." <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I. So if you I'm biased. I guess I haven't been to the site. So if they'll survive, I mean, I. That's why I did look at the original drawing was done by a reputable landscape yeah. architecture firm so I trust their knowledge of River Birch here white pine in the corner over there so I think that they did their due diligence I looked at that um, so I trust that they'll survive I just thought that the quantities were even beyond the 40 percent etc I mean five ferns this is a you know this 2,000 square feet here in the bottom five ferns aren't gonna you know I mean they might again they'll multiply over a decade but I think that was just some some of the perennials, I think, could have gone up, and I think just the size of the initial plants is a good bang for your buck is to buy a five or number seven. And yeah, I, and I really don't have a problem increasing some of those quantities and, and some of the sizes. Yeah. All right, so if you were to plant um, what some river birch or or ma red maples, where would you? Well, again, the previous plant had them. The river birches were kind of along here. It was red maple. Yeah. Carl, would you a it, of enough to just write, just mock it on yeah. this plan, and then John could take a snapshot of what we have up here, and then see if it works for you, and then come back to us at our next meeting with that. Yeah, everyone you agree with just that. Just where the trees were, or are we proposing a couple? What you're proposing? You oh, it, it would yeah. Be what your plan is? To to what you had mentioned, the river and birch and some quantity. red maples. Here's a here's a red pen. It's red. I mean, the bottom line is we need different levels of habitat, right? The herbaceous yeah, cover, the shrub cover. We need some variety of cover in that buffer these, zone. These ones, like the are nice. Those will get quite large. But, you know, the, but the, the landscape plan though was nuts. Uh, I know. I, I first one. I saw it. I. I agree. I, we need to find something in between or something. Even just adding five there, five there. I mean, I think if we're going to stick with what they kind of had before, this could be a little merge. Just to get some variety in there. Well, I, you know, the canopy yeah. in there—it's too. It's kind of cool. I mean, the, these rhododendrons will like. You know, the pines go well with that. If you wanted some shade here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do recall one of the things that we, because of the positioning of a, of a walkway and stairway that was out the back of the other house, there was some white pines that come down the side of that trail that we thought were going to be too, uh, close. Too, too, too close, too invasive in the, the, the path of the the I like the abravity there because it, right. it doesn't it really encroach into the yeah. path, not much maintenance. But I seem to remember that really on, on this down where the path was, I think, on as we're looking at here, where Carl's just drawing that circle in, I thought there was one one there and then one down where that cluster of the orange markers are there. I thought um, with... Uh, he drew that. I thought that there was a red maple. Long path is that? There's something we saved one. It, it, it's what you're no, talking it's about down, here. Down the lower left, to, down. to the yeah, here. down and uh, up, up a little from there. It's on the yeah, up, Where up he's just, just on the other side of the trail. So I thought there was, uh, yes, in there. I thought here. there was in there and on the other side. I thought there was a red maple, and is then on the other side, I thought there was a. There. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I there's don't a bunch of any small. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember any maple down there, but I know there's a whole bunch of pine that just, yeah. you know, as soon as you cross over that those hay bales, is just a. No, no, this was a part of the planting plan. I thought the original one. I thought there was a um, river birch on the other side, we were behind the pool, and then on the other side there was a couple of red maples. Yeah. But, is this, this going to grow in? Or 
this is fine at the end. Well, no, it's not going to grow. It won't grow in. Those are too far apart. <laughs> okay. If you want shade there, no, I those just... will provide shade, but these are probably, what, maybe 10 feet on the center or something? I think that, no, they were like eight feet on center, maybe? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So that's that shrub should look But keep in mind, they're, what, four or three feet wide? Yeah, they should grow to three, four feet wide. So they'll, they should grow together fairly tightly. And again, I mean, it used to be that the driveway and the wall were literally right yeah. Yeah. butting that. You know, now we've got a big yard yeah. kind of separating. So I, mean, I really only had 10 perennials, a couple more went to bury just to kind of fill in some of the gaps, and three trees. And then I think just even going to a number three or number five gallon pot is just a better chance of survival, I think. On everything? On what? Not the, not the um, fern, that's fine. I, I would just do maybe the um, the low bush blueberry. Yeah, number five, low bush blueberry. And then the dogwood, I think, would have a better chance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two and a half foot rhododendron is pretty typical. Did you build this house or just remodel it? No. Oh, it's brand new. Brand new. new. Brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sale if you want to buy. It. <laughs> 1.2 1. million. I'm sorry. Yeah. How long does it take? How long does it take? You know what? That's what it's listed for. One point. No, I. Oh. I, that's a great street. Oh, I, mean, I know. That's it, a, it's off way from Sandonis. It's, it's, it's amazing. Some very nice homes in there. Twenty. How long did it take you to build it? If, if I may ask. What? Well, look at that. <sighs> when did we have that roof? May. Months, yeah, yeah. yeah say like Kylie. nine, ten months. And no, sorry, it'll probably be nine, ten months before you know it's it's essentially done. How it's how probably been. It's like 3,200 square feet of finished, and then if they wanted to finish the attic or basement, they could get about 1,800 more. So it could be, you know, 5,000 square feet if they wanted to finish every square inch. So it could be a big house. It's a cool looking house. I like it. Intense. Yeah. Yes, it was. Like, I would have said 30 or 40,000. You got a right. great kitchen in it. I like Beautiful. the cook. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, like you made the kitchen. You really checked it out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen faces south, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> yep. Big windows, too. Sunlight, that's all I need. And you get a great view of the, the backyard and the wetlands, especially from the master bedroom. Looking out, it's gorgeous. It really is nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Tell my wife to run right over there and put a deposit on it. All right, John, so we would, uh, I guess we would need a modified plan. Okay. To approve. If you yeah, want to take, take a picture, picture of that. Of yep. and, uh, is, is that clear? So that's, these are winter berry, just additional winter yeah. berry. These are river berry. Yeah. Can mark it the whole kind. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a, a total number of yeah. additional. So yeah, we could start with that. So I think I put, I put two river birch, one white pine, added 10 cinnamon fern, and I added 10 winter berry, two, sorry, two winter berry. And then I just think that the low bush blueberry and the dogwood should I would just come in a minimum, at least a number five pot for that. Number five, and then the dog would also. Number yeah, five. those two. Okay, so just just so that I can repeat it, low bush blueberry, switch those to number five, dogwood number five, add two more winter berry, a white pine over on the right, yeah. two river birch on the left, yeah. and then uh, ten cinnamon fir an additional. Okay. That sounds good. That seems reasonable to me, and I can do yeah. that and bring it back to you. Sounds great. Thanks, great. John. Anything Thank else? You. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, when I ask, do you overprice it because you like the dicker? Or is that what it was worth? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's what it's worth. No, my, my father used to say that all the time. If you put something up for sale, it said overpriced because I love the dicker. Yeah, we'll see. I, I really. <laughs> Given given the way oh, yeah, some planning. of the houses in Reading are you planning on moving? This yeah. seems like a cheap one for me. No. You got you have a great backyard. I do. It, it extends all the way to uh, yeah. yeah. Where's that? North Reading. I have bought Bear Meadow. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if I was like two or three houses further down the street because I have the parking lot that Bear Meadow yeah. behind my house. Oh. Oh yeah. And until my neighbor who moved in is a cop. You wouldn't believe the stuff we'd find in that parking lot the next day after the kids were there. It's just, it was horrible, but they will fix that. No, the place is nice and clean. I know. Easily bored. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We, we, uh, someone called me and asked 
we killed him. He's the trash. So if you can, you go into the cut through the hills and check every single one of them. Another one. Well, I had that note on the trash can. If it's full, just heave it into your yard and you'll get it. Yeah, because I don't. Yeah. Well, not just full, I right. open. Yeah, open. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm Do I accept right. donations? I trust yeah. they're not doing anything. They're not really loud or anything. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, next on the agenda is... Uh, Order of Conditions. Order of Conditions, Azalea Circle. Do folks have a chance or opportunity to review that? As you're... Reviewing it, did everyone review it? I did send it to Sean Malone and Tom uh, Hughes. Hughes. I uh, didn't hear from Tom, but uh, Sean got back to me, and he had uh, just the only thing I really wanted added that was substantive was that um, I restricted in the conditions number four. I restricted all work to be in front of the limit of work line, but we modified that to accept invasive removal in uh, kind of more of the 25 foot and the 35 foot area. So uh, it was reviewed by the applicant and you guys have had it for a day. Is that enough? Yeah. <laughs> It should be six days. <laughs> it should be six days. I'm going to tell you, 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 you guys would never work for the right town of Reading, man. That's, so that's I, more than enough time. It's like, so, more than you should ask. So, Chuck, what happened with the sewer again? It's uh, not clear. They, they need to so, put the in a pump. so, there's a sewer easement. Um, right. There's a sewer easement. And what's going to go through butter? to connect up to the south, but then they couldn't do that? Is that right? No. It, they put a stub, whatever they call it, and they put in this high-pressure waste ejection system in the house to feed into the existing sewer. And it's all being done within the easement. Because they're going to some of the old pipe. The old pipe was cracked. So they're basically putting a pipe inside of it, smaller diameter, that will allow for the sewage discharge with the aid of a sewage ejector pump. I think that's what they, if I recall, that's how they were going to use it. Yeah, I was going to try to show you, but uh, when they built out Carnation Circle, it's the same that did Carnation Circle that owns this last remaining piece of I was thinking for the future. So he left an easement and a, would you say a hub or a stub? He left, he, well he left like a 10 or 12 foot piece of pipe there but with the ground settlement and the wall that was built over yeah. it, the pump, pipe has a dip in it so they don't have a nice clean gravity flow into the catch base of the sewer. So they're going to line it? <clears throat> so they're putting another pipe inside it. I guess they're going to fill it so you can't get any back pressure out of it around the outside of the pipe they can access it and they're going to just use a high pressure discharge pump, pump, sewage ejector, sewage ejector. So that whole, that whole uh, amount of time that we waited for was for the engineering to prove ownership, prove uh, easement rights, and to prove that they could line it and they asked for it to be uh, CTTV'd. Uh, the pipe, there was a lot of steps involved to making sure that that pipe was, was adequate. Yeah, and the neighbors weren't. They were still concerned that they couldn't accomplish all this without going outside the defined area of the easement, as it turned out. And to see the, the easement is From what I remember. right next to the uh, white pine. So that's what that was all about. Uh, I did talk to Sean about the amount of um, mitigation that they're doing, square footage, the buck on removal, verify that that was all still part of the plan. 
Uh, so we're <coughs> everything's been worked out. If you did take a look at it, and we hopefully we didn't miss anything, you can look at this copy. This is one we're going to sign. If, if so, the last so the last thing I did see though is a December memo from our engineering department about those about the. Did, did engineering, did we get any additional follow-up after this December 12th memo? Yeah, it's in the documents. Okay. okay. So uh, the document would be memorandum from Alexander Azicki on uh, February 27, 2019. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, and that was the one we reviewed at the last meeting. Okay. Actually, I think you weren't here the last meeting, but no. I think it was like the day before. Okay. He had, he had approved it. It could have been even that right. day. As long as. <laughs> but the day. Yeah, see, yeah. the last minute stuff right. is like what yeah. we're talking about tonight. Yeah, it was that. Yeah. It's probably that okay. day. It might have been the same day. Okay. That the if you guys town engineer. It and went yeah. over it at the last meeting. Yeah. Contempt. <clears throat> Oh, I remember we asked the guys, and what Anika also would like to know is. Appreciate that. So it worked out just fine. Any, any. Okay. So you would need a motion to. Issue. I think we close. To issue. Uh, we check the uh, minutes, but I think we closed, and we're just going to motion to issue. And then sign. Make a motion to issue uh, order. Order conditions for 270 0709 125 and 126 Azalea Circle. Short second. All those in favor? Great. Uh, who is the second? Great, and there you go. This is another one they had. This is their third kick. At this project. All right, let's see what happens next. They were approved for two houses with a they just never driveway. Right. They were approved for uh, <coughs> the first one was through a superseding order from DP. They were approved with a two houses with a uh, shared driveway. And it's ended up being a house with an in law or, a, or an apartment some sort of living structure attached to it. Quite a reduction. So, we have an order of conditions for 270-0659, and they're asking for, this is um, 56 Cross Street, and they're asking for an extension. That's right. 56 Cross Street uh, doesn't believe that they will finish prior to the expiration of the original order of conditions. They don't done a think lot of work. in their wildest dream. Oh, I've been in that house. That's fantastic. The whole thing is just really beautiful. So they're doing a top-notch job out there. But there's a couple of things on the outside that they don't have time right now to get to because of the weather. But it is something that they're going to get to this spring. So in lieu of the expiration date, which I think was in March? Is that? Sorry, May? May? May 12, 2016. Which is in May. Um, they wanted to extend the order of conditions for an entire year. Do we have a motion? A motion to grant the extension of uh, uh, Order of condition DEP number 270-0659-56 Cross Street, Reading. One second. All those in favor? Okay. So this is uh, just an attachment to the order of conditions. It's Form 7, and what ends up happening is uh, after we sign it, the it gets sent out certified mail, and the applicant takes it to the Registry of Deeds and records it against their deed and against the original order of conditions, and then we get a copy of that. So I'm not, I, 
I'm sure everyone here knew that, but I just thought that if someone was at home who couldn't make it tonight, when they receive this in the mail, now they'll know what to do. <laughs> No, we, uh, so extensions have been uh, on hold with the, for a long time, uh, during 2008, 9, 10, 11, and 12, they, the state, um, they decided to yeah. just unilaterally grant extensions. Yeah, continuing, because people were putting off projects so much. Right, right. So, and then they've just started happening again. 2016 was basically when we started seeing them again. But, uh, you know, the projects that we have here in Reading, for the most part, are something that you know, can get done in three years. Okay. So. Um, Chuck, do you have an update on Mass Army National Guard? Um, I do. So, um... I went to I went to Camp Curtis Guild this last Thursday, and I uh, there was people. So the four budding towns, Reading being one of them, were asked to go. Uh, jump on my. Uh, Who's the fourth? It's Reading, Linfield, and Wakefield, right? Peabody. That doesn't abut Camp Curtis Guild. Mm, it might. Might. It's, no, it's, it's no, all in this. This is exactly what we got at it's the. This North Reading. Yeah. So, yeah, it's North Reading. Sorry, I wasn't yeah. even listening. So it is North Reading, and um, so we went to this N ramp um, right. meeting, and they were talking about the fact that. They want to put this together with the four towns and talk about the stakeholders, the support, the national military strategies of the U.S. Army, all this. We got all that. But then they told us that I always thought that Reading was the biggest stakeholder, but they're not. Um, no. It's Lin Linfield. Is. It's Linfield, yeah. Yep. And Reading comes in second. So Linfield has 352 acres and Reading has 200 and. 87 acres, but I would have to say that 80, uh, Reading has the 287 best acres. <laughs> okay? Well, just tell you a quick aside to this. <laughs> yes. The, uh... This is the uh, natural communities out there, just wetland, forested, upland. Uh, we went through this, and Bob's going to. Oh, no, I was going to just tell you a funny story about those lines. Or separation between Linfield and Reading. You can hunt out there. If you step one foot into Linfield, there's a game warden out there. He catches you. Oh. You, your truck, your gun. I mean, the guy is just, just an idiot. You know? <laughs> no, because the people they don't know where the line is. They don't know that they just walked out of Reading into Linfield, and he doesn't care. No. It's just it's one of these things. These aren't overt acts of poaching. This is just. Mucking around in the woods. Some guy out in the woods no mucking around who no wanders bound. into this unbounded, unmarked territory and ends up getting thrown in jail for it or fined or something. The guy's really yeah. not very friendly. So I just, I don't care. I know you didn't care about that, but I thought I tell you. No, I think that's very interesting. I don't know if I'm going to find myself out in that area. <coughs> well, if you're hunting, it's a problem. If you're just walking, it doesn't matter. Here's the natural communities. Here's the uh, habitat area, priority so you and out? estimated habitat. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and you'll see that Redding has a lot of that uh, habitat area in it. It's huge. It's well, yeah. just a small wow. area. Wait, what is it's a it? huge what? area. Very shrimp. That's a shrimp. Chuck, I have a question for you. Sure. <laughs> what? Did they ever clean up the contamination that was on that property from way back when, or is that just sitting in a hole somewhere? Well, don't make so we do have an expert here, but I'll give a 
shot at that. Hmm. They are. Be I believe that they only clean it up as needed, and it, everything is kind of considered either an official or unofficial limited use. So what's is that? Do I get the term right? Where they can I dig down. So if they're not disturbing the soil, they're not doing anything about it. So if it's if it's dirty and it's discovered in Massachusetts, it goes through a whole process. It's lovely, um, and at the end of it, they in order to close it, they can put what Chuck's describing, which is an activity and use limitation. So basically, it's a deed restriction. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that, like that if you're in a property in Waltham, they bury a, a skirt four feet down. They, they put, put a marker. No schools, no growing food. Right. right, and they put a marker barrier right. actually in the ground so that if anybody's doing emergency digging, they know when they're about to hit right. you know, something funky underneath. That they know, is kind of a membrane, right? That, that's, right, you know. right, like, so a, we, like something you'd lie in a landfill with. We've been involved in some projects, and they're, they're taking down these little huts that they had back in the day. They're not, they're not taking out the slab. So... I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's so. Is this the kind of stuff they're doing here, at on this property? Do you know, Anika? Not now. I don't think no. so. I think this is just. No, this is. They're just trying to create a plan and trying to get their resource areas. Uh, they're doing a resource. Yeah, management. they're trying to understand what they have, and what conditions it's in. So here's some wetlands that they have. They actually ha have hired a wetland person who works here and on the Cape, and she's gone out and delineated the wetland. And Who's although, that, Chuck? I, I don't know her name. It's not... Was she there at that <coughs> the meeting that you went to? She was. She was. Um, but it was the person from uh, AECOM, no. Katie Barnacle, that ran the whole thing. Once they have this management plan, is is this just checking off a reg requirement? Yes. In so their in their yep. statute, federal. Or it's state? like having a housing plan, so you can have access to grants. Right. So they're they're taking this first step. Right. To who's there? The government. The government. Camp Curtis Grill is taking this first step, so they can have access to future projects and money. To do these projects, so how much you know what you have. How can you propose your property for some <coughs> some building? So here's the wetlands. Now, can I ask Chuck when you say future projects, like converting this land to something that they would turn over, sell to public domain? No, they no. can't do that. This is just for governmental projects. Yeah, the projects come up. Good question, but it's in here somewhere. So just going through the wetlands here, some of the habitats, here's some of the open space. Uh, recent projects with the public is they uh, they did some they have some bats in the tunnels that get them from the firing range to the impact area and the bats have uh, gone uh, they've actually they live in there and they found several different types uh, and they spotted turtle they've done that and here's some of the wetlands problems they're calling this uh, on the upper right hand side they're calling that and algae bloom and it looked like flock to me and the iron flock it, I was gonna say iron flock well because it has that red look but they were saying al algae bloom um, they have invasives and I don't know they wanted to ask everyone's advice on how to get rid of them but no one took a stab at that so can and then I, yeah sorry, can I just comment back on that um, I've seen something extremely similar to that um, around the perimeter of landfills. A lot of landfills in Massachusetts were built um, in wetlands mm -hmm. because it's useless land and mm -hmm. that's where they put get chemically is you'll get um, leachate from the waste um, becoming slightly acidic because of what the when the waste is in touch with the water um, it moisture it gets a little acidic and leaches and as it mi as it discharges to the nearby wetlands you'll get like reduced so you get this um, acidic water that's leached out mostly metals and when when it gets it hits the oxygen it goes from 
anoxic to oxygenate it and it rusts out and and it precipitates out the metals that could be that, that could so be from metals sink to the bottom into the metals that's a I mean, you know, you rust is a metals out. precipitate. Yeah, it looks well, like precipitate it out is. typically is like rain precipitates but out of a cloud and falls. Do I assume because it's hit metals are heavier than what it's suspended in? Those suspended solids sink. They do, but it's it's part of it's part of the aquatic. I mean, it's uh, part of the aquatic environment. Well, think about it. There, I mean, there's a lot of um, wasn't there a lot of shooting and and well the. The most recent contamination they found on the site that they already closed out in 2007, they found the reason it was called contaminated was in copper and antimony above contamination soil. So, and would you get that from ordinance? Associated with you could uh, lead discharge, right? Ordinance, yeah. Well, that would be the cleaning projectiles or yeah. cleaning solutions. Be cleaning, you get all sorts of. But isn't well, you know, they're not shooting on the whole, the whole plant. But didn't they, they, they no, I mean, but another thing about these military installations, I mean, the histories for, especially this has been around a long time, and the history, you know, you, nobody has a full record of how much stuff was spilled, dumped, or buried out there yeah, because... Look at, I had machines on, 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 you know, on rent. Down at Otis Air Force Base for years, they had a sparging operation going on down there. I had a couple hundred horsepower air compressors pumping air on the ground 24/7, just to get all that cut, all that stuff that they had dumped, all the jet fuel and all the kerosenes and all the other stuff in the ground for so many years. They drill pipes down deep into the ground below the water table, and they blow air in the ground and cause it to all percolate up to the top, and they can clean it up. Mobilize it. Yeah. Gotta get it out. Um, so I mean. Fun. <laughs> that said, I mean, s some of that, s you know, iron isn't really a toxin, <laughs> you know, and and that rust is a sign of iron, but, um, so you know, but sometimes that's that's a flag for other things leaching to wetlands. It's like minestrone soup. <laughs> It's, it's a little <laughs> eerie when you when you're walking around and oh, you I'll see frogs it. going through it. Oh, I think I you know that's funny. I didn't. I think I have. I never knew what it was though. What? It's it looks rust. Funny. Yeah. It's rust. But to me, wow. from my landfill days, when you see, when you're near a place that you know was filled, and you know has had a lot of um, use, like uh, up in Boxford, Chuck, I, we did a whole wetland sampling program. When we saw, when we sampled sediment, is that where you get your most of your thoughts from? Because that the landfill do there you, do you reaches it into a like wetland, that? and it's no. it's disgusting. No. Many, many, many wetlands. It's Milford. It's Boxford. Well, it's in back of the town hall in, in Boxford, there's a there's a road out to a capped landfill that is a soccer field, and on one side of the road, it's relative. This is a dirt road. It goes out to the animal pit. Um, that's the only reason why you'd be out there. And on the other side of the road is a wetland, and it's, huge. it's full of flock, and it's like... It's what is you flock? It's this, this stuff. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like thick spider webs, red spider webs, or some moss that was hanging from a tree, but it's suspended. I mean, there is a little bit of water clear above it, and it hovers down by the bottom, but it's suspended. Um, what does it mean? Well, it's just flock is just some particulates that have uh, joined together and become larger. Do you have molecules of certain substances that just build this web? Well, it's iron that just can grab each other and just became bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's the flock. Okay. So, and maybe some other stuff, right? That I'm not it's sure. Kind of string arsenic. And arsenic. Well, it's not always arsenic, is it? That was a problem. Well, arsenic. But you're saying that all flock has arsenic in it. No, no, no. I'm not yeah, saying all that's flock part has arsenic. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that looks like a huge amount of iron, and sometimes you don't. I mean, some places you can see that naturally when there's, you know, but it's kind of rare. So. Okay. This one. <laughs> Interesting comment. Concerning. GE had a building in Lynn at their river forest. Their jet. GE Jet Engine Group, 
<coughs> run across the street, well, from what's been happening the main plant, there's this huge building, the size of a football field, three or four stories, five stories tall. I'll plan in the future. <coughs> Completely <coughs> robotically controlled. Billet material would come in one end, and finished goods would go out the other end, and there was virtually no humans in the building. G had a 12 year plan to test the viability of this unmanned factory. And when they were done with the building, they tried to donate it to the town of Lynn. I mean, the city of Lynn. They said, clean it up first. He said, no, we're just going to give it to you. They said, oh, no, you aren't. So G said, okay. And they and those, had, those two, they didn't two do anything lots. For those, years. those two lots, those two big, it, now it's a market basket. Could be. Yeah, no, I going through Lynn, I've seen those, yeah. But they were donating this. The, the town wanted the building, the police department, all other, they had all kinds of designs on this big, beautiful butler building there, basically, metal building. <laughs> they said, no can do, too much, too much poison in the ground. So the next slide shows um, agreement to put snow storage. And um, the camp is saying that they don't have much control on who goes in there and who doesn't go in there to dump snow. And they said it's close to wetlands. So we actually walked out and, and checked out this area where someone, and they're saying some town came in and cleared out a bunch of, so it's a huge snow storage area. And there were trees kind of in it in the center and all the trees got bulldozed to the edge with a lot of the topsoil. So the trees that remain, if they're not half fallen over, have huge mounds of dirt in between them. You know, it wasn't done with any kind of care. Right. They just try to create space and take off the topsoil. So, you know, I don't know if it's a new person in charge. They wanted to um, mention this and bring us out there and show it to us. It might have been the main point of this whole situation uh, to say that they're, they want to get a little more control over who's um, who's going to be dumping snow and when and how it's taken care of and maybe formalize an agreement. Um, but they know they're talking to the conservation people and I did uh, mention that to Chris Cole and uh, who's the DBW assistant director. and. Um, so he knows about that, but I don't know if they're going to reach out to, to Reading or not. The fact that it's close to wetlands, I think it's hundreds of feet from wetlands, m maybe more, and it's in a bowl. So anything getting between where they're dumping it, no matter how big it is, and the wetlands is going through the ground. There's no, absolutely no possibility. It's, it's draining and, and sheet flowing into the wetlands that are a foot away. So it's a foot from it. No, it's, the, the wetlands are hundreds, hundreds of, of feet people. away from forested area. Well, there's no contaminants from the snow getting into the wetlands, if that's the way it's situated. Yeah, it, it's. I think it's just trying, and it, one of the stories, uh, the gentleman that was talking to us said that um, they had locked the gate, and they found out that someone had created a whole new road around where the gate was that doesn't have a gate now. Your problem? I don't know what wow. year that was. But this is the government property. It's, wow. you know, prosecutors and... Trespasses will be shot. Well, he, I know it's kind of funny. Mean, trespasses, not How do you get by doing that? <laughs> yeah. So what he what he said was he understands there there might have been uh, uh, what's it Misuse. some, some <laughs> agreements back in the day uh, that he's not aware of, and you know when I when I was talking to Ryan that they he said that uh, the town. Uh, maintain the roads out there or it did work or something like that and that was an agreement so it seemed like these handshake deals these agreements weren't formalized and it's been fine but now that we're into this era where you know everyone's looking at your you know the land and how it's protected and and you know not to cause harm to it this is an area where no one's looking at and it's very obvious and even for the, you know, the National Guard, they've recognized that that's a problem that needs to uh, well, get under control. Isn't this so typical of the two faces, the two halves and personalities of the government? The infrastructure of their military or arms, arms branch doesn't 
give a shit about any of this. They're just trying to maintain the influence. And for the longest time, didn't care. You had no rights. You, you're in government property. Yet the same government is imposing all these strict laws and regulations and whatnot to say we have to adhere to yeah. these particular rules. But these sites, and they're all over the country. They're a mess. So this is a base that's um, under the jurisdiction of Massachusetts. So that might be the difference. I'm not, I'm not sure, and I think you're right, because I know that the military builds ports and then allows private entities to use them. So they're almost like... Was the Air Force up by Malibu or Carmel? So here's it's some more pictures of snow storage. snow storage areas. You can see how how extensive it is. This that top picture doesn't tell you what in the the dirt between the trees looked like, and the and the trees just being half knocked over, and all the bark missing from it. It's like that's the snow storage area. It's yeah. Redding's little glacier field. <laughs> yeah, it's ski till June there. Okay. So they're talking about invasive species and. Um, Interest and they want to do a draft in ramp, and they're going to write one with input from all the towns, and then it's going to be sent to each town, and any interested party can download it and make comments for 60 days. So that was that was it. I thought it was very informative. Um, they're also talking about a um, see that, that right there. This upcoming project. So that upcoming project they're calling a, uh, where do I have that, a command center. The green box? Yeah, the green box is a command center um, that they're competing against other bases around the country for. It's almost 100% in Reading. And you would think, wow, that's that's in pretty close proximity to a stream that runs in back of it and the wetlands over on one side, but that's all previously disturbed. You go out there and you can't even mistake it for a second that that looks like some, it's been roughed up so many times. There's not any trees on it, you know, so it's even, you know, I don't know what's growing in the soil, but trees, <laughs> trees aren't going there. Oh, it was just recently uh, tilled up and trees haven't established themselves. So they're looking for a command center in this area. Some of the other projects they want to do is this command center is supposed to be some high tech situation. And they're going to do a f they're going to redo the fence around the entire property. So this is a big maintenance depot, you know. Well, well, what has been used for maintenance depot for years for all that equipment you see parked in the yard. Yep. They 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 refurbish, rebuild, overhaul. I've been several projects in there for air compressors. So. But it looks like they're, they're trying to get something established in there that will give them long-term viability. Are they talking too much? Are they yes. Gonna, oh, I'll shut up. Are they going to uh, still do that project uh, uh, combined um, DPW for Wakefield and Reading? In that? They didn't speak about that. I think the towns are talking a lot about that. I'm not sure that the base is. And I'm not involved in any of those meetings. So only what I heard is... Yeah, you're gonna build it. In, in, you're anything. gonna build it inside the uh, Camp Curtis Guild property, and it's gonna be a combined DPW for both Wakefield and Reading. Where's Reading? Is DPW? It's over behind uh, Stop and Shop. So, do they, do they have a location? Because I hope I hope it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I think it's. As you look in there, see that the white white. Yeah. That's that. I think is a brand that's new. That's Linfield. That's a brand new maintenance facility. Was it Linfield on this DPW thing too? I'm not certain, but um, that's where it was. There's a brand new maintenance facility that was built there that we're going to add on to it. Um, and it was going to be. So they don't have to have duplication of facilities and equipment. And what's the, uh, the amount of space that they sit on over there? Running now, the DPW is on about 20 acres of land. Yeah, the, the DPW is five, but I think they, they said they could make it over to 20. So. Chuck, you get bills. I have one more to go over. Sturgis Park. So the DPW department wants to put out the bid tomorrow. They just want us to understand that what we've asked for within that pink area to 
Armour the Bank would include here's the armoring here's the bank between this area and this area here this bank will be cut back it's undercut right now by the force of the stream during high flow situations um, they're going to need to take a lot of the tree did anyone see Morton Field and what was what happened after that so they cleared out all the trees and they were able to access the stream to do the improvements. They're going to do the same thing here. They're going to remove all, uh, all of the bank, all of the trees, and park side of the stream. Yeah, it looks like it's on the park side of the stream. Uh, they're going to uh, back blade or strip and grub the area within the red line I just drew on there. Uh, we've asked for a couple of trees to be saved at the, I guess, the head wall, and but we didn't say it here. So, do you guys understand the project that you approved, and you realize that there's going to be a lot of earth moving, trees missing, and <coughs> is this over by the uh, this is over by the skating rink, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Down on the South Street side? That's it right it's, not here. On, it's not on the Pine Ridge side, right? Here's the here's the one that's half vegetated with uh, Fragmite. And the swing sets are just on the other side of this here. Okay. So is it South Street that comes down? South Street's on the very narrow end of the park. Yeah. Pine Ridge runs along the right. along side of the park. It's right. So the address is, it is on South Street. Yeah. Right so the armoring is um, cinder blocks or landscape blocks it's it's blocks this is an approved order of conditions no I, I'm yeah. not questioning the I order don't know of conditions. exactly what they're understand. made out of um, when do we approve this just recently for a couple of years a couple of years back yeah I could get yeah I didn't and this is because it was undercut for mm -hmm. a while and it survived and I mean, I remember when there was... George was me? Yeah, yeah I, I think remember so. him. Yeah, yeah, the, but yeah. what I do remember is the top of the bank at one portion of that was um, kind of eroding down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... It was, it's, it was sinking down, and, and there's the under-drain pipes coming in and going out. Different. Yeah, the pink is a proposed stream bed restoration would include removing all trees, if any, along the bank. That's going to be messy. We could write a note to protect anything larger than a certain size or diameter. Um, it's all our Or we could take a walk, and, and he's telling me I could take a walk, and, and, and we could just actually look at each one. I think it's basically herbaceous on I mean, that the, side, though. The thing about this, this here, though, those trees, if they're there, it, it always ends up, if I mean, that tree is, we're going to have to stop the armoring at this point. We're going to have to save the roots and then start it over here. I think that we've agreed to allow this project, and if there's trees here. Now, Alex is new. He wasn't here when we approved this project. He wasn't part of any of the meetings. He's just reviewing the order and trying to get a request for quote out, and he wants to make sure that we understand what's what it's going to look like. Have you been out there to see I was out there with George and Morris back in the day, and I know that the stream undercuts the bank, mm -hmm. and the bank is undercut by a foot, at least, if not more, and there's rocks and stuff that all the soil's been uh, washed away. Those trees will fall over anyways if nothing Where happens. Where are the trees? Are they on They're on the bank. Which side of the bank? Both sides? He didn't ID the trees over here, but he's saying if there are any. Uh, I don't My know, memory is there's no trees yeah. on this field side. There's more opposite on the residential side of that oh. stream. So, uh, on, on the non-park side. Thank you. <laughs> Across the stream. There's plenty of shrubs and, and trees. I, mean, I think there's a small floodplain and maybe some herbaceous growth. Not a lot of shrubs, but some trees. Oh, that's weird. As you're, you're looking through that, um, 
that's awesome. Do you have an update as to what happened with the... Slow mode. The, the um, here's the stream channel. Right. So there are trees on both sides. And this is this is what we're the area we're looking. Is that up there? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so I think there's trees up there. So we have an order of conditions, so let's let it stand. Is that what I'm hearing? Yep. I don't see a reason why not. Okay. If engineering looks at it and, and the I'm surprised it's taken them a while uh, to get to well, it, but I'll tell Alex see, I'll take a walk just to review it if they and need then to change. and then move and then go from there. All right, so if the existing conditions have changed from then to now. I have a bill for a water bill. This is our standard water and sewer bill next Pearl Street? Next to Pearl Street, yeah, on Pearl Street. It's for 1971. Can I get a motion to approve the water? Do I hear a motion? Bill? I thought we made a motion last last fall to put it on his tax bill. <laughs> you mean the softball? It used to be $15, uh, by the so way. So moved. Used to be All those in favor? Oh, I should have brought my water bill if you're going to pay yeah. water bills tonight. <laughs> I, know, I, just got I thought idea. I brought mine. I can't find it. Chuck, can you... Give me the, what the status is of the uh, of the the stream uh, channel work that was supposed to be done in the back corner of Morton. Uh, no Pine Bill. What comes in the back of that? Never happened. It never did. No. So yeah, that's been a bit of uh, controversy. We we were the DPW department came to us and said this is an emergency. We issued an emergency permit, and, it, and the work just never happened. I guess it wasn't an emergency. It was a quasi. -emergency. Yeah, but but there is an emergency out there. There's a pipe that, right. you know, covered in cement that the water used to go underneath it, but now it's that under the underside is basically covered by sand. Right. So now it must be going over it. Except, so there seems to be a problem out there, but it hasn't. You know, work hasn't happened on it. I don't. I don't know what that. Is. So I don't know if that's a gas pipe or a sewer pipe. Does it have curb appeal? Like so. Both wouldn't be good. They both know. stink, but one will explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They both will explode. So. Well, one more. Well, yeah, yeah, than the other. Yeah. So we would hear that again if it ever came up. It's you know, and you guys would have to think long and hard about issuing an emergency, and they have to verify that. So we have minutes. We have. Uh, okay. Two sets of minutes. Mm -hmm. Did anybody look at the 227 2019? I don't have any comments on that one. I looked at all of them, I don't have any comments on any of them. I do. Do I hear a motion to approve? 227? Yep, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Great. 112 29 2015. The only thing that you didn't have, there was a question mark and who. Uh, who was in attendance? No, I'm sorry. Oh, my question on that one is when we approved the third party review, did we say who it was? I think that was a. For, for Randall Road? Yeah. Well, it was. Um, it's not listed in that. So put it, put his name in? Yeah. If, if that's. Yeah. My, that's my interpretation of that. No, when we go to our engineering department, that's considered third party too, right? When we just ask the engineer to review a project? Yeah, we no. The, the, no. They, they have to look at the stormwater. They do that for us uh, anyways. So that's not a third party review? No. I thought somebody said that was. No, that's that just happens as a matter of, I don't know, policy or a matter of course. We They're there and they'll, they, I mean, they have a, we have a dual interest. They want to make sure that things are going the right way. Plus, this guy Alex is a stormwater, he's a stormwater guy. So he's been very, very helpful, and as you can see, he takes his time to make sure things are correct. Do we have a motion to approve 1229 2015? Second. Moved. Is amended. Second. All those in favor? 824 2016. The only thing that I had on that is. You didn't have the attendance of, of, of the CONCOM. And when I looked at the who, you know, who seconded and who, it was everybody, Longley, Scanlon, Couliard, Curtis, Flynn, Panette. Okay.
Is there a motion to so moved. As amended. All those second? Second. Se Bob seconded. Second. All those in favor? Okay. 9-14-2016. Wasn't here. <laughs> Chuck, what the question mark? I'm reading this and wow. No, that, so I looked at that today. <sighs> he sent the wrong one. So that shouldn't even be on here. What is this? What is what? I think that's a, uh, I didn't, I don't even know what that is. That looked kind of. <laughs> You've got to see this. You got to read some of that. You can't. But don't read it on TV. Right? <laughs> don't read it a lot. Well, I think I think that was. Uh, there's another 9/14/2016 that I should have attached. <laughs> that one must be a really rough draft. I just when you held it up, I saw that it wasn't even in the right format. <laughs> so I don't I don't think <laughs> that was. I'm just breezing. It's kind of. <laughs> Really appreciated that one. Thank you. Okay. It used to be more fun to read, though. <laughs> I can't figure it out. Right, can we? We're not going to approve that then. Yeah. We're going to get another one from you, right? So, 7 26, 2017. I've got to see that. I have a. <laughs> Let me see what you guys are talking about. If Carl's laughing, <laughs> I mean, this guy's seen a lot. He's over there, to, like, killing himself. I got to see this myself. It's just like I would be taking what, notes. It's uh, like, you know. Those minutes from me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was a stream of consciousness. I, uh, it's like, I object to the fact that my name wasn't spelled right. All right, fine. No. <laughs> oh, at least we get a reference here. Minor project change for 14, 414 Strawberry Hill. Um, on uh, 7 2017. Um, yeah, I've got a few comments, but not much. So, do I hear a motion to issue as amended? So moved. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Are you just hand that to me? Yeah, just if you can read it. And there's one below 10 11 2017. I'm impressed. I, I didn't see that impressive. one. 10 11. Nine. Hmm. That one I didn't review. We're doing so good. No. <laughs> hmm. Anybody else review it? No. Bob did. <laughs> Bob. Do I hear a motion to uh, issue? Sure. 10 11 12. 2017. <laughs> to, second. Right. All those in favor. Oh, we got a second. All right. All right. Great. Dave, we, the format looks good on it. Turn up my second game. What's that? Turn up my second, second thing. Oh, I thought you said you. You got to get your into second the game. Right. Gets you into the minutes. <laughs> That's right. Any other uh, items for tonight's meeting? Just this thing here. Oh. <laughs> New resident open house thing. Yeah, so we we go to the new resident open house. I went last year and. <laughs> H O U S E, not M O U T. <laughs> not open mouth. It's open house. There's no food. I don't know if there's refreshments. I don't know. I thought you said you get a booth. What is it? Food. Is so is this is this something that town we, day. is this something that we're sort of expect like if if we you go but do you just wander around or do you have a table or do you you know what I, I have you been, been? I haven't been this so. is on a, t a Tuesday night from five thirty to seven thirty I last year and I can't remember the format so I'm I'm yeah, sure that there, there. there's a lot of mingling going on sure but there might. I mean, Bob, you going? It's the right. second annual. Pops, Pops, get a basketball I'll be game. The bells on. You know, it's Tuesday night. I have basketball. Ah. Uh. Got basketball Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You can go and you can take a look at Postmark Square where you drive past to the library. It's going, going gangbusters over there. 
What? The post office one? Yeah, yeah. post office, yeah. What are they doing with it? What are they going to put in there? It's going to be uh, condos, commons, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be multi use. They're putting a parking garage underneath and then they're putting um, uh, condos up above and behind it. Restaurant. Fancy restaurant just going in where the post office was. Holy crap. Wow. Is that a big old thing? Is that it was set in um, it was set in pilings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. I should get to my New York resident. You said, are we going? It, it's New actually, yeah. it's going to be in. for the register. condos that build on the back. Because it, it's going to be behind. I, I have a, I got one. Yeah, I, I in the old yeah. parking lot, so it must be to build on top of it. Yeah, yeah we got some equipment in there. Yeah. 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 Closed, right? It's, I, I yeah, had, okay. Share something I want to um, so if you want to look at any of these plans, like it sounds like you didn't look uh, and you're interested in what the post office is going to look like, so you go to the planning division and they have previously approved yeah. projects and you look through your, you got to know the name of it, but you look through that and you'll see all the plans. They post everything on the site, so it's, it's probably on there. So. Do I have a motion to close the motion to adjourn? I, I have a question about the MACC conference. How, how was it? Did anybody go? Uh, <laughs> what did I say? What did I say happened 26 of the last 30 years when we've had the Tech Ed Association of Massachusetts conference there? It snowed. What happened oh, on the right. 2nd of March? It snowed. Right. Yeah, it did. You're right. That's right. I were thinking that because you said that during the meeting. And that, that, that Hogan Center is the tallest building. It's the highest parking lot, highest edifice it's steep. in the it's entire. It's a steep hill. It's a steep when, hill. When you're on the, I thought of that. When you're on the bottom floor of that, like where the they do the, the, the breakout, like the, yeah. the meeting, you're looking out and you're looking at the top of the spire of those like church buildings that are there. You're like level with that. And it, that's the day that it had all the ice and snow. So did we go? I didn't know. So moved. No. Okay, all those in favor. Okay, we're off. So I printed the native. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. But then yeah. I was going to email.